My name is Elise Del Francia. I'm the owner of Copycat Showroom downtown Palm Springs. And my husband and I owned the uh, property here. And my husband was afflicted with Parkinson's about five years ago. He found out that he had it. And he was in denial for a good two years and uh, medicated himself with alcohol and uh, would laugh about that, you know, alcohol's the only thing that makes him feel good. But after a while, you can't drink like that. So um, anyway, uh, we had found out about medical marijuana in California. We lived in Las Vegas at that time. And uh, when I realized that it was legal in the state of California, I gave him some unbeknownst to himself. And um, within 45 minutes after eating a pancake with marijuana on it, uh, he stopped shaking. And I walked over to his ottoman and sat down in front of him and I said, how do you feel? And he just put his hands out and said, look, look, I'm not shaking. And he had a smile on his face. He felt great. He did not move from that chair for six hours. So that was my light bulb moment. I knew that then I was onto something that was going to relieve his pain and suffering because it's horrible to have Parkinson's disease and not have any relief. And I feel that this is something that um, helps so many people in so many ways with pain and suffering. And to take some of the medication, the expensive pharmaceutical drugs um, are destroying people's lives, not really helping them. Either they can't afford the, the pharmaceutical drugs or it's damaging their kidneys or damaging their bodies in some way. So I'm behind this cause 100%, 110%. And anything that I can do, I will do. And I urge anybody that is interested in learning more about the true effects of medical marijuana, not what the government wants you to know, is to join in on this. You can't put people in jail for just trying to find some relief with what ails them. So there you have it, Lanny. Are we entering or anything? Are we, are we no, we're just starting with start. start this. Absolutely. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Don't worry. Good, I've seen a lot of you lately. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I like it. Um, when you look back in 2012, how, how would you characterize your year? Well, I mean, personally, it was a, it was a terrific year. It was, it was kind of like I, I, I embarked on some journeys, and I, and I, and I, I was optimistic enough to, to like, take on some things that I might not have in years previous. You're getting back on screen. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. That's the thing about, about being optimistic enough to, to take on some new things. And, and I, just, I just did... Uh, uh, in the last few years, I've done some episodes of Good Wife, and I did the Curb Your Enthusiasm, and, and I'm just in a new play. I mean, I've found a way to make drugs work for me a little bit better, and, and, and I'm just emboldened by, by those experiences, and, and I just thought, why am I not doing what I do? Why am I not doing uh, the thing that, that is giving me the most success and the most pleasure outside of my family? Was the moment you go on screen in this character, uh, and playing a guy with Parkinson's, like that's, that's a statement in and of itself. That's a different reality for, for television. It's right. bigger than just a guy in a TV show. Well, yeah, but it, and, and what's cool about that, and what's cool about the, 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 the reaction that people have to that with me, whether it's on the show as this character, as this essentially disabled character, or, or, or handicapped character, however you want to put it, someone with differently situated, um, yeah, that's 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 cool and that's new, um, but for me, that that that's the part of the character I don't have to think about. <laughs> I mean, that's that's I don't have to I don't have to play that. So, <laughs> so it's it's easy for me. You have a real sense of humor about uh, you know Parkinson's and the way you you present it publicly. The Kerber enthusiasm stuff was unbelievable. You know. Oh, thanks. Oh, Jesus Christ! What the hell? Yeah. Did you shake that up on purpose? Parkinson's. When, when Larry called me up, and I don't know Larry that well, I've met him a few times. But he called me up and asked me if I'd do it and, and pitched the concept to me, and I said, this is great. Because the way they work on that show is they, um, there's an idea, there's a, there's a series of points you want to get to in the scene, but how you get there is up to you. Yeah. It's all ad lib, it's all improv. And, and it was just great for me because I don't get a chance to do that much. And, and, and it just worked out great. Well, he did it in a humorous way, in the way that Rush Limbaugh really attacked you. Yeah. How do you well, feel about that? 
Again, I don't control how people respond to it. So, so I, I just let that go. However people react is how they react. It's how they zone their own thing. It's a half time, it's their, if they react, like if people go, how are you, are you okay? That's their fear. Right. You don't have to protect me. You don't have to step in for me and, 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 and say, don't you know what this guy's dealing with? Or, you know, just everybody chill. Yeah. And with Rush, it's different though. That's no, Rush, just... Rush, well, Rush, I mean, he, you gotta remember that he's dealing with a really small base. He's not dealing with a big, and that was the part, that was a mistake the Republicans made, was they thought this guy represented their, their constituency, and he doesn't. He's a, he's a fanatic. Yeah. And he's a showman, and he's, he's just, I mean, he didn't care about me, or he didn't care about stem cells, he didn't care about Parkinson's, he cared about how would he flame up his base, mm -hmm. and what would he say. And so, the thing about fighting him is, you can't fight him, because who are you trying to win over? And anybody reasonable and, and responsible gets that you're right. Yeah. <laughs> So to go into the public arena and, and fight them is like trying to win over people that already are on your side. So you just kind of go, oh, well, yeah, let's let him make noise in his own echo chamber. I want to read you a quote. This is from you at the uh, Senate Appropriation Subcommittee hearing. This is in D.C. in 99. You said, in my 40s, I can expect challenges most people wouldn't face until their 70s and 80s, if ever. But with your help, if we all do everything we can to eradicate this disease, when I'm in my 50s, I'll be dancing at my children's weddings. Yeah, I mean, I feel that way. In the sense that, that, um, that I feel that a lot of the things that we're doing at the foundation are going to pay off, and I feel like there's, 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 there's stuff that's happening outside of us that's also interesting stuff with, with figuring out ways to, to, to live longer and to live better. My symptoms, as, as, as moving around as I am right now, I mean, this is nothing. Yeah. This is, I found ways to control uh, what really gave me a hard time three or four years ago. Uh, dyskinesias that were really bad and rocking. If you look at some interviews I did, they were really, and, and the political ads I did, yeah. It, I had a much different situation than I have now, which is one of the reasons I, I feel good about going back to work. I can sit in a chair and I can have a conversation. I couldn't do that five years ago. If you think about how much, like when, when you were first, not when you were first diagnosed, but when you first started to take on this, this, this concept of foundation, how much, how much was Parkinson's in the public space? How much was it a part of fundraising? It wasn't in the public space very much at all because it was, it was, con it was considered uh, a situation that, that that affected the elderly and didn't affect younger people. So when I kind of brought it out there that it affected younger people, not that that made it any more worthy, it just made it, it just changed it in people's minds. Right. And, um, and so that was a big thing. And, and when, I, when I went public with it, I had some real misgivings. I, 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 I didn't know whether that was something I really wanted to do. And then once I did it, the genie was out of the bottle and, and, and I had this feeling of kind of desperation, like, oh my God, what did I do? And, yeah. and it was, in, you know, the post and, and all the papers and all the, the, the cable news networks, and I was, they were running me in slow motion like I was a tragic figure, and you know, if you're in slow motion, you're either dead or under indictment. <laughs> and, 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 and I really worried about it, but I went online and I went to some Parkinson's chat rooms and I saw the reaction of people. And I, it was the first time I realized I was part of a community, and I, I kind of went, wow, this is, there was, there was a lady who talked about going to a, a store, and the guy had always looked at her funny when she went into the store, and, and then finally, this one day she was, she was kind of shaking and fumbling with her, wallet and he said, what's the matter with you? And she said, I have Parkinson's. And he said, oh, like Michael Fox. Yeah. And I went, oh, wow, that's really, that's really heavy. That's really like a thing. You just don't feel alone anymore. You don't feel alone anymore. And I, for me, I felt a real sense, I, I felt this sense of opportunity. You know, people want to hear, when they say, what are you doing in the foundation? Is there anything close? And they want to hear, yeah, we found this pine nut that, that, that if you squeeze the oil out, it's a cure. Well, it doesn't work that way. So we, we, we and we're trying to find that. Uh, we're very close to a, uh, to finding a biomarker, we've got a big research project going on, which is a way to find uh, 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 an indicator, a common indicator in, in all Parkinson's patients that, that will tip us off before symptoms are, 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 are evident. Um, yeah. Because by the time symptoms are evident, by the time my pinky twitched, 80% of the dopamine producing cells in my brain are already dead. Right. So if we can find a way early on that we can find a marker, um, then, we can, then we can identify um, uh, along the way the progression of the disease and we can treat it earlier, and we can get in there earlier. And if we can find a drug that halts progression and, and, and eliminates symptoms, that may not be, in, in the pure sense, a cure, but, but it's as good as a cure. Did you have to change the way you approached being optimistic over the years? Yeah, I mean, I was always just a basically optimistic person when I was a kid, but, but I mean, it's, it's really, it's a richer thing now, and it's, and it's informed by, by, by the difficult times. It's not informed by a, kind of a sense of, a, a wide open future in front of me and, 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 I, and I can't wait to get into it. Yeah. It's more of a, a, a past behind me 
that it's been difficult and challenging, but has, because I've gotten through it, has made me optimistic. How'd you get there? Um, I just had some, I had some struggles. I mean, I, 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 I was diagnosed, and, and around the time I was diagnosed, I mean, my son was born and my father died within a year. And so I, I just when I kind of got how valuable my dad was yeah. in, in, in relation to the fact that I was about to raise a son, I lost him. And so that was really, that threw me off. And then I was diagnosed very shortly after. And, and then I, I realized that my diagnosis, that one of the ways I was, I was self-treating it by drinking more. And so I realized I had to not do that anymore. And that was a challenge. And, and all that stuff, and I mean, that put pressure on my marriage. And all that stuff was just to come through that and to come through that with a, a stronger marriage than ever and a sobriety that was really lasting and, and, and an understanding of how much I love my dad and how, how important he was to me in his absence, which is unfortunate, but, but a real strong appreciation for him and, a, and a, a new respect for him. And again, my marriage, it strengthened my marriage because I realized she wasn't going anywhere when I was diagnosed and I, that's your first fear. Yeah, for sure. Is, is am I going to become a burden on my family and am I going to... The fact that you wanted to have more children, and now <laughs> I have, I have uh, three more kids after that, after my diagnosis. Um, and, and they're great, and I, wouldn't, I can't imagine life without them. You know, as we go through the, the new year, 2013 now, what are, you, what are you looking forward to? Is there a, a moment that you're hanging on? Well, there's a couple things. I mean, it, uh, like I said, my, my daughters are going to start, they're going to finish uh, high school next, next June, and, and then... Going to going to college, and um, that's an amazing thing. That's really, I mean, a, like I said, we're babies. And when when I when I started out on this journey, and and um, and uh, I'm gonna start the show and, and and do this new show, and that's gonna be big. And I mean, every year is a, is cool. It's an opportunity. It's amazing. Can we, before we wrap up, a rapid fire anthropology questions your way. What is one food that's uh, your favorite gross food? Um, well, I don't know if it's gross, but I like circus peanuts. Those, those, <laughs> those kind of fake corn oil-based yeah. marshmallow <laughs> things. That are really, eat what, like five of them, and they become a rock that you think you'll never pass. <laughs> you hope you never pass. What's the weirdest thing a fan ever said to you? Um, Michael Keaton, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you have somebody that you have to make peace with? Um... Uh, who do I have to make peace with? I have to make peace with, with uh, I think with, I have to understand people that have fear and ignorance. I mean, just generally, not, I'm not a person, but, but just people that, that, that whose first instinct is to, is to, is to find fault and to, and to, and to cast blame. And, and I just have to realize that, they, that that's fear. And, and, and whenever I, c I come across it, I have to risk the temptation to say, to write them off, but, but instead to kind of say, how can I, how can I just work around that and, and hopefully bring them along? So great to see you, man. It's great to see you, man. Real pleasure. If you want to join Team Fox, uh, and I recommend you do, we've got it on our website. Go to strombo.com for all the details there. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Mike Paulus, and the purpose of this video is to make viewers aware of Taylor French's condition with Parkinson's disease and what can happen when this condition changes dramatically with the intake of a nutritional extract. In the first portion of this video, his caretaker Janet assists him into the car. This process can take as long as five minutes. He has limited use of his legs and arms, therefore making him totally dependent on Janet to get in and out of the car, go to the bathroom, go to bed, eat, and so on. Under normal circumstances, it is also very difficult for him to speak. When Taylor was living with me 18 months ago, he was able to drive, he was able to walk around, take care of himself. So you can see that the Parkinson's has certainly deteriorated his body and his system. Something else is, is that you can see in a response to a question that I give him, it takes a while for him to really sort of gather his senses and it may take up to two minutes to respond.
Yes, seeing is believing. This is the same tailor that we've all seen in the wheelchair every day, every week. The difference is for the last 10 days, Taylor has been taking a therapeutic dose of a vegetable extract. And after 15 minutes since his last dose, Taylor is standing, walking, moving on his own. On this particular occasion, it is for 45 minutes. But if he is on this, for an extended period of time, he will regain his abilities through the miraculous nature of its neurogenic properties. We've created this video to show how important this treatment is for a Parkinson's patient to actually give them back a normal life. As you can see in this case, it certainly is making a big change for Taylor. Never. <laughs> the saying, never speak with your mouth full. Uh, obviously, the uh, extract has also uh, increased his uh, sense of humor. <laughs> and, uh, or actually restored his sense of humor. It's never lost. For most of us, raising our arms is no big deal. For Taylor, it requires a lot of help. On this day, he effortlessly brings them up, twittering his fingers in the air. Could you imagine how much difference this could make if he has this capability for 24 hours every day, not just for once in nine months for 45 minutes? So after Janet asks Taylor, hey, Taylor, do you want to go for a walk? He turns around, heads towards the front of the house, and this part is a miracle as he confidently ambles towards the gate. Usually he can run in a forward falling position, but not walk. He also needs someone to catch him at his destination. Not this time. Here, after eyeballing his Buick and being determined a bit of a ham when a camera is going, Taylor now decides he's man enough to drive the car, especially after being fed by Janet. Can he do this? Remember, he's not walked on his own or driven in months. Confidence is now getting the best of him, and he will try. Sure enough, under his own power, he makes all the moves that are easy for the rest of us, but impossible for him. As you can see, when we say under your own power, that means a lot. For someone to make all the moves of getting into a car themselves, starting it up, positioning the, the steering wheel, closing the door, rolling up the window. All of these requires a lot of concentration and effort for someone who normally needs to be helped into a car. This is an incredible miracle. Pulling it out. We're uh, hoping that uh, he's paying attention here and not crashing into anything, but uh, you can see totally in control. Unbelievable. <laughs> There he goes, and we suspect he'll return. 